What's up guys, thanks for tuning into the channel. My name is Jonathan and I do videos and vlogs about astronomy and astrophotography from the dark skies of West Virginia. In this video, I'll talk about a few things to be on the lookout for in the night sky, as well as what deep sky objects are well placed for astrophotography and stargazing for the month of February, 2023. Also, we will take a look at a few different cool opportunities to catch an awesome nightscape image for any wide field landscape astrophotographers watching, so Stick around guys, join me as we take a look at what's up in the night sky. So February is actually a pretty quiet month compared to January, um, but let's go ahead and start with the comet. On February 2nd, Comet C-2022 ZTF will finally reach its brightest, so your best chance to view it is between now and then. Um, by the middle of the month, it will start to dim significantly and eventually vanish from view as it hurtles back into the solar system. Also keep in mind that there's a full moon on the 5th, which will make spotting it even more difficult. As evening twilight fades on the 1st, Saturn will finally be too low in the horizon to see it and it won't return till later on in the year. On the 3rd, the moon meets Pollux, the brighter of the two legendary Gemini twins. And Mars is still slowly dimming, but it's still very bright at magnitude 0.2, and it remains above the famous bright orange star Aldebaran. Mars actually outshines Aldebaran, so potentially could be a pretty cool opportunity for the binoculars just to kind of see those two together. And on the 5th, we had the full snow moon rising. Catching the full moon as it rises um, on the eastern horizon is definitely one of the greatest night sky images to capture and is best viewed about 10 minutes after it rises above the horizon when it kind of appears with this beautiful orange color. Um, the higher it goes, the less orange color you'll have. So definitely check that out, guys. Um, from the 7th to the 8th, the brightening Venus moves closer to Jupiter and February 10th and 11th, the comet meets Mars. And by this time, it's now been well over a week since the comet got closest to Earth, but if it's still shining brightly, then for the 10th and the 11th, there are opportunities to catch it pretty close to Mars. So again, another great opportunity to pull out the binoculars or the telephoto lenses and get those two together in the same image. Um, on February 13th, the moon reaches its last quarter phase, which means it rises just after midnight. And you can typically find short periods of moon free skies, which as much as I love the moon and love to photograph the moon, it really does wash out the sky and make faint objects hard to see so if you're planning a late night astrophotography session then the 13th through the new moon on February 20th is your prime time. So we have the new moon on February 20th and we also have on the 22nd Jupiter in conjunction with the crescent moon offering up probably the most beautiful shot of the month. So just after sunset on the 22nd, point your cameras to the southwest horizon to see uh, the planet Jupiter just one degrees from a 10% lit crescent moon. And just below the two will be Venus, which continues to climb into the post-sunset sky all month long and brightening all the time. So yeah, definitely another uh, awesome opportunity for binoculars. And on the 27th, Mars and the moon will actually appear next to each other in the south. Again, another great photographic opportunity to catch the two together. Um, they will be at their highest point in the sky around 7 p.m., but will still be visible to about 2 a.m. Also, Venus and Jupiter will appear next to each other on the 28th in the southwestern sky and will reach their closest point the following day. As for a few other binocular targets for this month, we have Orion in the perfect spot to view it all month long, and inside the Orion constellation lies the Orion Nebula, which is always a great treat to see. We also have the comet ZTF is at its brightest, so there's still time to see that most of the month. The Pleiades is also well placed for observing and are really cool to see through binoculars um, to try to see how many stars you can see. The moon will dominate the sky throughout the first half of the month, so plenty of chances to watch it get smaller and smaller as the month goes on. Um, it's kind of cool to actually watch how the shadows on the surface kind of change from night to night. So, Also, we have the Hyades star cluster right next to the Pleiades in the sky all month long, so make sure to check that out also. It's a open star cluster, so hopefully that gives you guys a few ideas for some cool binocular targets, but we'll go ahead and move on to some deep sky targets. Thank you. 
So basically there's always something to photograph in the night sky, but most deep sky objects have a certain time of the year where they are in just the right place and are at their highest point in the sky and can be seen all night long. This is considered the best or optimum time to photograph them, so I'm going to list a few awesome targets that are in this peak time during the month of February. So first up, we have the Angel Nebula, and classified as NGC 2170 and is a dusty nebula reflecting the light of nearby hot stars. Inside of this target is a blue reflection nebula, a red emission nebula, and a backdrop of colorful stars. It is part of a massive star-forming molecular cloud in the constellation of the unicorn, Monoceros, and is estimated to be 2400 light years away from Earth. I would recommend shooting this in broadband as it preserves those natural colors, but it could definitely benefit adding some H data and really making that red gas pop. Um, next up we have the Cone Nebula and Christmas Tree Cluster. Classified as NGC 2264, this region is about 30 light years across and is located in Monoceros as well. And this is a target with a lot of hydrogen alpha and it will really pop adding an HA filter. So definitely give it a go and it can really be fun to process and it's really cool looking with enough exposure time. So definitely give that a shot. Um, next up we have IC443 aka the Jellyfish Nebula and this is a target that wears its name well. This cosmic sea creature is located in the constellation of Gemini and is a galactic supernova remnant roughly 5,000 light years away. This target does well using narrowband filters and really does look exactly like a jellyfish so definitely check that out guys um, it's a fun target to do too next up we have target m78 and this is a blue reflection nebula in the orion constellation and this target is one better captured in true color so i would recommend using a broadband filter or actually no filter at all if you can get away to some dark skies this target has always been a favorite and it's another one that is super fun to process so definitely check out m78 if you get the chance it will not disappoint Moving on to another one of my favorites, as well as being a very popular target for astrophotography, the Rosette Nebula has always captivated me since first seeing it. This target is an H2 region located near one end of the giant molecular cloud and, you guessed it, Monoceros. This target plays very well with narrowband filters and is definitely one to impress your friends with. In the heart of the Rosette Nebula lies a bright open cluster of stars cataloged as NGC 2244. So definitely worth checking out guys, the Rosette Nebula, it's definitely one of my favorites. And last but not least, we have NGC 2359, AKA Thor's Helmet Nebula. And this target is an emission nebula located in the constellation Canis Major. And this object is very small and is better suited for longer focal length scopes, but I have managed to uh, capture a few nice wide field images throughout the years, so this one also does well using narrowband filters and really does look like Thor's helmet, so definitely worth giving it a shot. All right guys, now we're going to take a look around the 20th during the new moon phase and we will take a look at a few opportunities to catch an awesome nightscape image. Okay guys, here we are in the 19th at about 10 o'clock at night and you can see facing west we have the winter circle here and there's a great potential to catch a milky way panorama of the winter circle here we got the pleiades we have mars here and orion with all of the winter targets um, arched across the sky you will have to do like a 180 degree panorama to capture the entire thing um, basically from north to south but also later on in the night if we jump over here to let's fast forward this a little bit and we face the other direction you will start to see at about five o'clock in the morning we have the center of the galaxy here and a milky way arch panorama facing the opposite direction so there is potential to catch the winter circle at the beginning of the night and then close the night out with the uh with this panorama so if you're willing to get up at about five o'clock in the morning and you can get a shot of the the core of the galaxy here with Ro Ophiuchi and we got Vega the bright star here certain times of the year where you can catch a Milky Way arch low enough on the horizon to really uh give a good foreground into the image so 
if we come here on the 21st at 7:30, you can see right after dark we have the moon venus and jupiter kind of aligned here but if we come over to the 22nd you actually got venus the crescent moon and jupiter right uh, pretty close where you can catch a pretty cool foreground um, with this pairing here and this is actually a, a pretty cool conjunction here and it will probably be the best opportunities this month to catch uh, these three targets with a foreground so definitely check that out guys um, but that's about all I got for this one um, if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful in any way um, consider subscribing to the channel it really does kind of help push this video out and yeah hopefully uh this will be a new kind of series that i'm going to be doing this year so till next time guys clear skies good luck and hope you get something good peace